Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now today I'm going to make a very quick and easy and tasty dish that you can make at home in no time at all. It's, it's pig simple. I'm going to make a chickpea and sweet potato curry. Let's get to it. So to make our chickpea curry, we're going to need the following ingredients. We're going to use two chins of chickpeas, one tin of chopped tomatoes, some rock salt, a little bit of cinnamon, cardamoms, turmeric, some garlic, a few raisins, curry powder, a couple of onions, and a sweet potato. And the sweet potato is going to get baked. Step one. I'm going to chop up two onions, just as a reminder, that's a good way to chop an onion. Chop the end part off here. Then you can peel the skin back. Let's give it a little bend, peel the skin back. I'm going to go two layers because the second layer is a little bit rough. Yeah, at this stage, this part can stay on. All you have to do now is chop, 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 chop. Using the bridge technique, remember? Technique holding the other side, now you can walk over the bridge technique. And then all we do is chop straight across. Okay, the next step is put a little oil in the pan. Now, kids always ask me, how do we know when the oil is hot enough? Initially, when the oil goes in, it moves really slowly. Now if you put your onions in while the oil is still cold, then what happens is that as the oil warms up, the, the ingredients, i.e. the onions, will soak up the oil uh, before they start to cook. But if we wait for the, on, for the oil to get up to temperature, then when we put the onions in, they'll start to cook straight away, so they'll absorb less oil too, it'll taste less greasy. You don't want the, the onions to soak up the oil, you want them to cook in the oil. But the first step's quite easy. Making this curry is, is in fact really, really easy. All I'm going to do, dump some of the onions in, cook, cook them down for three or four minutes, uh, making sure they don't get, get too brown. Then I'm going to put in a can of chopped tomatoes, and then the secret really is, is to let that really all cook down. As the tomatoes cook down, some of the water evaporates and that helps the flavour to intensify. It's called reducing, reduction method. We can make sauces, in essence, using two different methods. You can use uh, starch, i.e. flour or corn flour, to thicken or you can also make, a, start, make a, a sauce by the reduction method. That's where you leave it on the stove and it reduces down, the water evaporates and the flavour intensifies. That's the method we're going to use today. So we can see our oil's at the temperature because our onion's now sizzling. Drop that in. Okay, so my onion's been cooking down now for about four to five minutes. They've softened up nicely. But the heat's been not too high, so they've softened up but they've not gone too brown. If you have the heat up too high, they'll go, they'll caramelize too quickly, they'll go broke brown and then they'll, then they'll burn. So they'll soften up nicely, but I've not allowed them to burn. So at this, this stage, when they've softened up nicely, I'm going to add my seasonings. So I'm going to start off with some cardamoms. Now cardamoms get a really nice flavor to a curry, but they're not nice when you actually bite into them. So I'm going to count them in, count in how many I put in, so I can make sure at the very end, I'm going to count them out. Now they have a really nice aromatic uh, smell, aroma to them, and they give it a really nice, almost perfumey type of taste to a curry. And in some Asian cuisine, they can also be used in a dessert, and I'm going to be using them in a dessert in one of my next practicals. So, mm. so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got nine cardamoms, count them in. At the very end of the curry, I need to count them back out again, because you don't want to bite into them. They go in. Next, I've got some curry, some curry powder touch of turmeric and I'm going to let them cook down a little bit again these things are activated by heat the flavor so I'm gonna let them cook down a little bit before I add my tomatoes let them cook down for two or three minutes okay so about two or three minutes later after I've added my uh, curry powder and my cardamoms I'm gonna add my tin of chopped tomato Mm. 
Into this, I'm gonna add a generous spoonful of tomato puree, some garlic, and then I'm gonna add in the chickpeas, including the water. Turn the heat up. And allow it to cook down for about 15, 20 minutes. Now the important thing with a curry really, as I'm learning really, is the cooking down time. Sometimes you can cook too quickly. But if you let this cook down right, take its time, the flavor in the tomato and the seasonings will really take the time and intensify. Already we've got some great colors. Um, you can see the great colors of this already. It's quite watery at the moment, but once it's had time to cook down, all the flavors will be released. And the very final thing we'll do will be to add our sweet potato. That's at the very end. To add a little touch of sweetness, what I'm also gonna do in about five minutes is add in a handful of raisins. That gives a nice little touch of sweetness to a curry. So here we have our sweet potato. When it first comes out of the oven, been baking for about 40 minutes, the skin goes really baggy. So it starts off rock solid. And then the skin goes really baggy. And as you can see, there's little dark marks are where the sugar has oozed out of the sweet potato and caramelized. All you then is remove the skin, which is really easy, it's really baggy. Uh, you can smell it, it smells almost like toffee. It's, it's amazing. Chop it up into chunks, add it to our curry. Now this goes in towards the end. I don't want you to mush up into the curry. I want you to just uh, have little chunks of, of sweetness throughout. And then, we are done. So we're nearly there now, our sweet potato. Just gonna add that in. And then gently just stir that through. And the flavor's really intensified now. Don't forget we have our cardamoms in there. So I've got to count them back out at the end. There we have it, our super tasty sweet potato and chickpea curry. Final stage, a little bit of rock salt, and I think we're done. And there we have it, our chickpea and sweet potato curry. A little bit of sweetness coming in from the sweet potato, obviously, and also the raisins which we've added. And there we have it, our chickpea and sweet potato curry. Really couldn't be simpler. Fry some onions, throw in some tomato, bit of seasonings, chickpeas, let it all cook down. Boom, you've got a curry. These things, they sound a bit fancy pants, chickpea and sweet potato curry, but they really ain't, once you see it, there's nothing to it. So here we are, our sweet chickpea and sweet potato curry. Now what I probably have that with, I probably have that with some, with some rice. I'm not gonna show how to make the rice. Rice is quite straightforward. I'm not really gonna eat it now either. I'm gonna have it uh, probably tomorrow. Now what's interesting with this is that you guys know who follow the channel that I'm doing a uh, My Sugar Free Life. Even something as simple as curry, when you buy a curry from the shop or pre-packaged or even the curry sauces, they have sugar in them. Sugar is put into so many things we don't even realize. But going forward, I'm gonna try to use sweet substitutes or alternatives to get the sweet flavor that we, we like when we're having savor as well as sweet dishes without using refined white sugar in particular. Now there are alternatives, for example, one of the ones I've got in the cupboard is a coconut sugar. It's still sugar, but it acts very differently in the body uh, to the processed refined white sugar that we're used to having. But even so, I'm gonna try and start looking at ways to move beyond the sugar altogether. So there we have it, our sweet potato and chickpea curry. Really easy, really tasty. Lots of protein in it as well, um, and great for the family. Once again, thanks for joining me at Food Tech 101. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Food Tech 101 is, now, is on Facebook, as well as Instagram, and you can also follow us on Twitter. If you need to get a hold of us, you can get a hold of us at admin at foodtech101.co.uk. You can follow me on Food Tech 101, because I'm also doing a, a, a vlog, if you haven't, if you're just tuning in, called My Sugar Free Life, and each week, um, I go through some of the changes that, that happened with me as I look to put out refined sugar out of my diet. More as an experiment to see what happens, but also to, to show you that you can live without uh, certain things like refined white sugar. So you can follow me on Food Tech 101 and My Sugar Free Life there as well. Don't forget to leave a comment below. As always, my name is Mr. Liebird. 
but you can call me sir. Of things we